Hey folks, Rebecca here for a look at the upcoming budget in November. Yes, I am at the workplace. The past couple of weeks have been a little bit of a whirlwind and I have been doing a lot of overtime. So I'm trying to make the most use of my time here because in the fire movement, we are all about efficiency, aren't we? So since I'm spending a lot of time at work, I thought that I would take the opportunity to use my lunch break here to try and get this upcoming November budget done. So with that said, if you're new here, welcome. If you are returning, welcome. Glad to have you back. And with that, we will jump into my November budget. I like to use Google Sheets for my budget. So when we're doing budget planning like this, the column that we're focused on is this budgeted column column. This is the plan for the month. And as the month goes on, I fill in the actual column. Starting at the top of my budget here, I block my income sources for privacy. But for November, my total income I'm expecting to bring home is 4240 bucks. That is what we're working with. Moving down in to my bills and spending for the month, I start with my house payment. That is $545 every month. Duke Energy is is my power bill. I am budgeting 100 bucks for that. Water bill, I'm expecting to be about 40. Internet will be $160.68 as usual. It's high, but that is all I can get where I live. It is crappy satellite internet. Next after that will be my Planet Fitness membership. That's $23.06 every month. I am budgeting $100 for fuel for my car. And my car is also going to need another oil change in November and I'll have to get the tires rotated and they also recommended a fuel service. I don't know if I really need the fuel service or not. I may end up pushing that off. We'll see. If I do everything, it should be about $210. So eh, I hate to spend that much money all in one go, but we'll see what happens. Groceries, I budgeted $300 and groceries for me includes everything um, food wise for the house and any personal care items, anything for Rollo as far as treats go, um, any alcohol if I happen to buy any. Um, yeah, all of that just goes under the grocery category for me. So I try to keep that at $300, preferably below for the month. Lawn care, I am budgeting $100 for that. Hopefully the grass will start slowing down with the growing at my house soon as the weather cools off. And lastly, I have my mom listed here. Now, I am filming this on October 18th, so there's still one more paycheck that I need to get in for October. I owed my mom $4,000 about because she fronted me some money to get some work done on my house in September, and I am hoping that I might be able to completely get her paid back in October, but I don't know, it's gonna be really tight. So I'm putting $500 here for mom. If I don't get her paid back in October, then I can finish doing that in November. So grand total for my bills and spending section for the month is $2,078.74. Next section here is my debt section, and I do have student loans that I had refinanced through Earnest. Payments come out on the 17th every month for Earnest, and in November it's going to be $475.19. I have a variable interest rate with them, but it is super low. It has been 2.06% for the past maybe two or three months now, and they just dropped it again. It's 2.03% now, so I don't think the interest rate is going to go up anytime soon for my for my student loans so I am not aggressively paying these back this is the minimum automatic payment that they take out every month and actually I am 30% of the way paid back on these loans so yay for that next is my car payment and that is $386 every month not aggressively paying that yet but I hope to in the future and 
Lastly, the holistic doctor I am seeing, I do still owe them some money. I forget the total right now, but I pay $500 a month to them to get them paid off before any interest accrues on the program that I purchased from them. It was a 0% interest thing. So $500 for the holistic doctor. And that is all of the consumer debts that I have and total towards debt planned in November is going to be $1,361.19. That brings me down to my favorite section of the budget. This is my investing and fire tracking section of the budget. I keep track of all of my savings accounts and investing accounts in this section. Now, I have a Roth IRA with M1, I've got a regular taxable account with M1 and Fidelity, but I am not planning on contributing anything to those in November. I am purely just contributing to my work retirement account as well as any extra money I have left over in November after getting my mom paid back, I will put back into my savings account because I also drained my savings account back in September to get some work done on my home. Right now, now it is looking like come the end of November if everything goes according to plan that I should have about $800 that I can put into my savings account. We'll see how it goes and as far as my retirement account at work goes, my 403b, I um, contribute up to the match currently so I'm expecting that I should be putting about $600 in November towards my 403b and I think my work will match somewhere around $225 for the month so that brings the total to $1,625 five dollars and grand total down here that has given pretty much every cent that I'm expecting to come in for November some sort of purpose. I do like to do a zero based budget that's just how I've always done it and I kind of like having a plan laid out. All right, and scooting over to the side of the fire tracking portion of my budget, we can see here I have copied and pasted everything from my budgeted column over into the actual column. So if things were to go exactly according to plan for November, then y'all can see that my savings rate would be about 32%. Not horrible, um, but for me, the way that I calculate my savings rate, I do not include my debt payments or payments towards my mortgage in my savings rate calculations. So roughly here, if I were to do it that way, y'all can see just by looking up here that if we take my savings rate from just this section, the 32% of my income here, and add what I'm putting to debt for November, that's another 32%, so we're at 64%. And then we come up here and look at my house payment. That is another 12%, so almost 13%. So that means that I would have a 75% roughly savings rate for November if I counted all of those things into my savings rate. Personally, I kind of like to just not count my debt payments towards the savings rate because if I see a lower-ish number in my opinion like 32 percent then in my mind I need to get those numbers up. We got to pump them up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. All right, y'all, I think that that will cover it for the November budget plan. I realize that we do still have a little bit of time before November actually gets here, but at this moment, I think that that is how November is shaping up to be. Of course, things can always change. Let me know what you thought of this one down in the comment section below, and I'll catch y'all in my next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.